Hi, I'm Tony Vlahos at Execunet. Is your business growing each year intentionally or are you simply treading water? Well, my guest today will share his wisdom on the subject as well as a few concepts and techniques for business growth. Steve Roma is a partner at Dynamic Insights, a company that creates and implements customized growth strategies that are based in market research and data analysis. He has spent over 30 years managing and leading businesses, including 17 years at Kimberly Clark with roles in brand management, new business development, manufacturing, and finance. Steve has business and marketing leadership experience at multiple companies and uses his analytical and creative skills to help companies create and implement winning strategies. Steve, thank you for joining me today. Hi, Tony. Well, let's jump right into it. So you've been a successful business and marketing leader in multiple industries. And for the last 10 years, of course, you've been consulting and helping other companies grow. Tell me, Steve, what you've learned in that time frame. So, Tony, I've learned a lot, actually. <laughs> but, sure. uh, I learned, you know, I've learned three key things that has taken me a while to learn. Um, but the, the first thing is every one of our engagements and what we see in business is it starts with a leader. Um, and, and their ability to engage their team in a, in a customer-facing um, way that, that drives passion to deliver to the consumer. And sometimes we, we gloss over that and try to go into a growth strategy without addressing that. But I've learned through the hard way, through, through uh, difficult times that I, I sit down with the leader first and say, you know, tell me, are you really into this? Is, do you have something that you can engage your, um, your team with? And are they engaged to deliver something to the consumer uh, or are they engaged to make something? And if they have a vision to the consumer and can see the consumer and feel the consumer, and I don't mean that in a consumer products way, I mean whoever is using your product way. If they know your customers and who's using your product, um, they'll make magic happen. And, and if they hear your vision and they can take it home with them and bring it back to work, they'll make magic happen. But it's gotta start with the leader and their ability to say, I, I don't wanna just make something, I wanna empower my team. So I, that's the first thing. And then the, the second thing is, is even when you have that passion, it takes some expertise to really create a strong growth platform. And we call it a growth platform because it's really the base of the business. It's creating that winning brand value proposition. So some people call it an elevator speech or other things, but in your 30 or 60 seconds, can every single person in your company and everyone that represents your company in 30 seconds say, what makes you different and better? Than the alternative and if they can't it's it's probably an issue you need to resolve and you need to come up with that winning strategy um, and and that that really needs to focus on what the customer gets not what you make another we, we see this over and over again companies are very good at telling their customers how hard they work to make the stuff for them and what all the features are and gadgets and all the cool things but the customer only cares about the benefit to them what do i get for using this. So we can sometimes look at that and help turn that language around to say, it's not what you make, it's what they get. Mm. Um, and, and then the third thing that we've learned is, is um, we've come up with great plans over the 10 years, some that have never been successful. And the reason they haven't been successful is it took us a while to learn it's more than a plan. You have to have a great plan. You have to be able to execute the plan, but then it comes down to change management. This, these companies have been going about this the same way for a long time. And when we come in and say, here's a different way to go about marketing and a, a way to grow, and it's really about this consumer facing, what we realize is as soon as that plan is rolled out, it, it all becomes change management. Everybody, when they get uh, under stress, wants to go back and do it the way they did it before. So we've now really understood that we can't go in and create a plan in three months like a lot of other consultants and walk away. We, we really have to go in and create a plan in a month or two and then stay with them for the next 12 to 18 months with resources that can help them implement by adding incremental resources, but also understand change management. They know when to step in and when to say, okay, we, we got to go back to the principles of the consumer facing. So mm -hmm. those are the three things, you know, really starts with the leader and, and without their, without their commitment, it's, 
doesn't work uh, on the secondary level. Uh, they got to have a good, strong pl growth platform. And then once you have the plan, you don't just walk away. It's it's a year or two years before you really create that sustainable implementation. Yeah. So what a complete thoughtful answer. Thank you. And one of the other things I'm taking away from your response, Steve, is there are no shortcuts. You have to put in the hard work and it takes time. Do you find that many organizations and their leaders are sort of uh, faint of heart when it comes to that aspect of working with you? And elaborate, please, on your answer so we can understand more fully the mindset of the person that you most engage with. Yeah, so that's that's a great question because again, we've learned this the hard way. I, I'm a business guy, not much of a consultant, but I love helping companies. And what again, what we've learned over time is is there's a lot of there's a lot of business leaders that want to take shortcuts. So sales aren't going well. Let's hire a new sales manager. Sales aren't going right. Let's hire a new agency. Let's hire a new marketing person. Let's get a new campaign. All of those things. And when we hear that, we say, you know, unless you're willing to take a step back and relook at your business through through different eyes and, and do whatever it takes across all functions to deliver, we're, we're not in. Uh, we're, we're not the quick fix guys. If you want something, you want a new campaign to make you new and sexy, we, mm, that's not us. <laughs> if you want a plan that will really leverage your core strengths in, in a way that potential customers will buy it at a premium price that that's us but that doesn't take up that doesn't take a week <clears throat> it doesn't take a month uh, it takes some time but I can tell you our results are, are they speak for themselves I mean we have multiple year uh, growth when we leave uh, and and we're we're pretty good at creating that sustainable growth if somebody's willing to invest in that uh, and make that true and lasting change throughout their organization. And again, this is not a marketing effort, right? The marketing director is not going to do this. This is a company wide. We want to become, uh, we want to create this sustainable growth uh, scenario, and we want everyone to contribute to that growth. So we do have a structured, we have a very structured process. So I'm, I'm somewhat of an analytic and we have a number of analytics PhDs on our team. So we do have a structured process for helping people create this plan. Um, but I gotta tell you, every one of those is customized. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, we have a structured process and you know, it starts with foundational alignment. We get that growth platform. We understand what we can build the company upon. And then we do strategic planning with getting customer insights to understand who we're marketing to and what we're trying to do. And then we put together a five-year growth plan, which again, scares a lot of companies. They say, you know what, we don't know five years. The reason we do five-year growth plans is, is we're really trying to remove barriers and get people to think about what could be. And you can think about what could be in five years and not worry about the barriers. So we tend to ask, where do you want to be in five years? Figure that out. And then we help them build a bridge to get there. And, and frankly, it may take you 10 years. I don't know. What, what's more important is where you're going long term, not where you're going next month. Right. Um, and, and so we do that. And then again, after that, we really use a structured process once we get that plan to really then go into a marketing plan, then go into a campaign, then go into um, those kind of details, but not until you're done with the foundational alignment, strategic planning part of that. And Absolutely. That sounds complicated. Frankly, that could take less than a month if you had dedicated resources to go all the way through the foundational alignment, strategic planning. It typically doesn't because people are running a business, right? They, you don't stop running a business and do this, so you're doing both. So it, it typically takes a little longer, mostly because the client is balancing running their business and, and creating this sustainable growth plan. Okay, talk to me, please, Steve, about the common hurdles that you encounter, rather companies encounter that, that work with you to creating sustained growth. What have you seen? So. I'm going to go back to the first one. It, it really is commitment, right? right? And so we do a pretty good job up front of really understanding whether a company's committed. And, and when we say committed to lasting change, that's going to take time, money, and personal commitment. And, and if, if a company's not willing to do that, then frankly, they're just, they're, they're not going to make that sustainable change. And they need to keep doing the short-term things, keep hiring a new sales manager, keep hiring a new marketing manager, until they get tired of doing that and are willing to invest in real change. So the biggest hurdle, honestly, is commitment. If we have commitment, 
we, we generally will be successful. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there, you know, there's other hurdles. So once we get started, the second hurdle is maintaining momentum. And, and what I mean by that is a company has a business to run. And so we're trying to do this strategic plan. What we typically do is say, we want this thing done in four to six weeks. And the reason we're doing that is because if we can maintain momentum and thinking, um, that, then that plan comes together very quickly. If it stretches out, what happens is people tend to lose, mo lose momentum, lose motivation, and they fall back into uh, the existing business. Uh, and those plans take much, much longer. So, you know, a plan, if you do momentum and you get over that hurdle can take as little as a month or two. If you lose momentum, we've had plans take eight to 12 months because the company simply is not responding. So momentum is the second hurdle and we push that really hard. And by the way, we do, the way we do that, Tony, to keep the momentum is, again, because we're business folks, we've, we've run businesses for decades. Um, we understand that's the critical thing you do every day. So we take very little management time. We interview the management core group. We gather all the facts and then we draft the plan and send it back to them for review, which is entirely different than them drafting the plan. Mm. And honestly, we get it 90% right because we've been there. We're, we, we hear them, we've been there. And so now we're making small edits and those can be in hour long sessions that are very efficient. So. Then the third hurdle I see is, okay, we're done with the plan. We don't need you guys anymore. We're good. We're going to implement. And boy, we talk about this right up front. If you really want us to just write a plan and give it to you, we're not terribly interested because we see the failure rate of that much higher than the success rate. It's not about billable hours for us. It's more about making sure the company's successful. And that third hurdle comes into change management again. If, if, if we don't get that implemented over time, and you don't have that rock in your organization that is continually saying, this is the, what we're doing change-wise, you fall back. Mm -hmm. And so that, that third hurdle is, is really, it prompted us to get new resources to our team, which doesn't include me, but we have resources that'll go live with a company and, and they'll go live with them three, four days a week for months in order to make this change happen uh, and be on the ground. Their intent is to get out as soon as they can when they have a sustainable change done, but sometimes that takes longer uh, than other times. But without that resource, that hurdle, generally what happens, we leave with that plan. The plan is a piece of paper. They run the business off on a different direction and that plan falls. So that's that's the her third hurdle. So really the, the big hurdles are really that commitment and then maintaining momentum. And once you maintain momentum, get that plan done, is going quickly into implementation and change management. If you do those three things right, we'll, we'll guarantee success. You will be successful in whatever market you're in. Wow, you described that so completely. Thank you. So it, it raises a couple of more questions, Steve. The first is, let's talk about fit, because when you're working that closely with an organization, either at the top of the process or through the implementation phase, I would suspect ideally you want to work with clients that are a good fit for what you can do for them. Tell me how you assess that. So again, really great question and I learn the hard way, right? So I, I've tried to force my way into some situations that we just frankly weren't a good fit. And, and I, now that I've gone through this a number of times, I believe what it comes down to is a personality fit first, is uh, we take the time with, with anybody that's interested Honestly, if they have a serious interest, uh, we're going to jump on the phone and talk to them. And, and we're going to talk over, it's usually 45 minutes to an hour. We, we tend to want to do it in a half an hour, and it never seems to work that way because we're, we're always interested and we always find uh, the discussion to go on. But we, we talk to the business leader uh, for, for you know, a time period, a half an hour, hour. And we really ask probing questions. Let's just, so tell us about your business. Tell us the value proposition. And it's not threatening, it's not a test. It's we're trying to understand from their perspective, where are they? And, and we talk about pain points. What, what's keeping you up at night? What are you, what are you frustrated with? What, what do you wish you could do? Uh, and then through that, we typically, in, in, through that conversation are also giving advice, uh, right? Right on the phone, first one saying, you know, if I've seen this situation in another industry and this is how they've solved it, have you considered that? So it's, it's not just a, you know, 20 questions, give me a business assessment. It's a discussion. 
with someone that really does consulting every day. And it's a give and take. And what that allows us to do is, first of all, get, get a feel for the leader. Are, are, are they a good fit for us? Do we feel comfortable with them? Are they committed? Is this something they really want to do? And then secondly, the leader needs to feel comfortable with us. Right? We're, we're very transparent, very upfront. We are not consultant-like at all. We're, we're business folks. We're, if we see an issue, we're going to solve it. And so we don't dance a lot. We don't do pretty reports. We're in, in the dirt. Let's get going and let's go. So you got to be really comfortable with that style. And if that makes people uncomfortable, that, that they aren't very comfortable with that transparent problem solving, we're generally not a good fit. And then secondly, if they're looking again for, yeah, I, I hear all this stuff, but what's the advertising campaign? I need my slogan. Yeah, well, that's not us either. We, we can get there and, and we can get people involved to help with that, but that's 10 steps down the road. Hmm. So we had that first discussion um, and, and through that, anyone can go to you know, either your website or, or our website and, and sign up and just send us a, their contact information, say, I wanna talk, no obligation. And frankly, if it doesn't work, you know, we've, we've had a good conversation and met another person in the network that'll probably be good down the road. Uh, if it does work, um, then we typically will talk that first time, uh, get a fit, and then we'll send an email back after that and say, hey, can you give me a little bit more information so I understand exactly where your business is? We can exchange non-disclosure agreements uh, and, and then really understand where they are. Then we put a proposal together and, and we'll send them a proposal, say, here's what the scope of work is. Mm -hmm. But we don't really do that until we, first of all, find out whether it's a good fit. And then second of all, understand where they are. Some people are much further down the road with their value proposition than others. Uh, and until we get a feel for that, it's very hard to, to say what we can or can't do. Sure. And I bet so many of our listeners are smiling ear to ear over your statement that you're actually not your consultants. You know, it's not that experience because we've all been there. And without um, disparaging that, that wonderful field at all, um, often it just goes in a direction that is not the formula for sustainable growth. So I'm glad that you're uh, definitely a change of pace entirely from, from that aspect of, of working with outsiders. So Steve, um, one last question. I'm sure many chief executives and, and C-suite executives who are leaning in and listening are wondering, this sounds awesome, but what does it cost to work with Dynamic Insights? What, what insight can you share there, Steve? Yeah, and that's that's a really tough question, right? Because every engagement's totally different. Um, but but what I can say uh, right off the top, if if you're thinking this is, you know, I'm going to spend 10 grand or 15 grand, that we're we're probably not going to be able to do that. Um, mm -hmm. We're, we're going to spend more time and more money than that. Uh, the return uh, is is going to be in the triple digits on on profitability. we we will have a very positive return, but it's going to be an investment. And again, I, I'm going to go back to what I started with. It starts with the leader and, and they have to commit their time and, and money to saying, I, I'm going to solve this and I'm gonna engage people that know how to help solve this. And so, you know, the the cost is gonna vary. And, and so it can, it can get very expensive if we're there for a very long period of time, um, but we customize it for each each client. And, and we say, what, what are you looking for investment-wise? Smaller companies can invest less. And so we have to understand how to do that uh, on, on that type of basis. But what we don't do uh, is go in and say, we're going we're gonna to do this for five or $10,000 and see where it gets. Uh, we don't really do that. Uh, and we also ask right up front, are, are you committed to doing this for a year or two years? And I look at it as what you're really doing is hiring a part-time CEO, CMO team that you frankly could never afford. We, we run billion dollar businesses. So you're hiring a part-time person. So when you think about if I'm going to hire that person for a year, what would you invest mm -hmm. in hiring that person? The good news is, and again, being a business person, it's variable cost, right? So you're not actually hiring a person. You're hiring us for a period of time, and then that cost goes away. So uh, I, I would look at it as what, what are you willing to invest to get that expertise in-house? And if you were to hire a group like us, uh, the, the multiple talents would be a lot of money. So, mm -hmm. you know, costs are, are going to vary. 
Um, but again, they're not, if somebody's looking at that 5, 10, 15,000, it's, it's not in that range. Got it. Well, Steve, thank you so much for sharing your insight, for making time for me today. And we'll be providing all of our listeners and viewers a link to understand more about your organization and the transformative changes you can help them make. So thank you. And I look forward to talking to you again in the future.